Hey guys! So today's video is a book haul and it's my February book haul. It's gonna be the biggest book haul that I've ever filmed because I just lost all self-control this month. I got sent a few things, um, like one from a friend and one from a company to read and yeah basically things just got absolutely out of hand so I'm gonna get going because it's gonna, like get some tea, this is gonna be long. <laughs> Um, so first up is Dash and Lily's Book of Dares by Rachel Cohn and David Lefaithan. I read Dash and Lily's, The Twelve Days of Dash and Lily, I think it was called, um, over at Christmas because it was a Christmassy book. This, I think, is the book that comes before it, so I basically read it in the wrong order. But I really, really enjoyed the other one, and this is a nice, short, young adult book, so I figured I'd really enjoy it. Right. Then this is something that a friend actually sent me and I was really really excited to get because I love Megan so much. She's, if you follow her on Twitter or Instagram, she's known as the Body Posy Panda. This is what she looks like and she's all about body positivity and celebrating diverse bodies, celebrating our bodies the way they are without changing them. Um, she has recovered from an eating disorder so she's kind of come back and I just find her really inspirational so I'm excited to read her book. And then we've got The Unbearable Lightness of Being being, by Milan or Milan Kundera, I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, this has got quite a like boring cover but I thought it was quite nice and simple, I quite enjoyed it and I've heard a lot about this book, it's one of those things that everybody has kind of spoken about and it's referenced a lot but I've never, I've never actually come across it to read it, so hopefully it's good. Um, it says on the back, The unbearable lightness of being is a story of irreconcilable love and infidelities in which the author addresses himself to the nature of 20th century being, offering a wide range of brilliant and amusing philosophical speculations. Um, and this was published in 1984, so it's a bit old, um, but that literally does not make it any worse. Okay, kind of makes it better to be honest. Right, I, there are so many books in this haul. Um, this is Sophia Khan is Not Obliged by Aisha Malik. It's all about a girl whose parents, I think, expect her... Yeah, it says, when her sort of boyfriend slash possible marriage partner to be proves a little close to his parents, Sophia Khan is ready to renounce men for good, or at least she was, until her boss persuades her to write a tell-all expose on the Muslim dating scene. As her woes become her work, Sophia must lean on the support of her brilliant friends, baffled colleagues and baffling parents as she seeks stories for her book. But in amongst the marriage crazy relatives, racist tube passengers and polygamy inclined friends, could there be a lingering possibility that she might just be falling in love? I absolutely am so excited for this. This sounds amazing. I think the cover's really beautiful as well. I don't know a lot about dating as a Muslim and I think it would be really interesting to find more out about it. I really just enjoy books mostly that teach me something about things that I don't know or don't understand and I think that's part of part of reading and part of why we do it, or well, at least it's part of why I do it. <laughs> so next up is Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. I've heard so much about this book, like everybody and their mum has read it and it's been staring at me for months and months and months and I, but I basically, I rarely ever, if ever at all, buy brand new books and I haven't found it second hand but it was half price so I justified it and this is what the blurb says. Eleanor Oliphant leads a simple life. She wears the same clothes to work every day, eats the same meal deal for lunch every day and buys the same two bottles of vodka to drink every weekend. Eleanor Oliphant is happy. Nothing is missing from her carefully timetabled existence, except, sometimes, everything. So this is kind of a mental health orientated book, which I love. I think it's really important to talk about issues like this and the fact that it's so popular kind of makes me happy. So. I picked up Lucky by Alice Siebold who wrote The Lovely Bones which I've read and I think it's quite a lot of people have read it, it's a very popular book. I haven't heard of this though. In a memoir hailed for its searing candour and wit, Alice Siebold reveals how her life was utterly transformed when, 
As an 18 year old college freshman, she was brutally raped and beaten in a park near campus. What propels this chronicle of her recovery is Seabold's indomitable spirit as she struggles for understanding. As her dazed family and friends sometimes bungle their efforts to provide comfort and support, and as, ultimately, she triumphs, managing through grit and co coincidence to help secure her attacker's arrest and conviction. So this is a kind of, at least semi-autographical book, and although it's obviously got some hard-hitting topics in it, again, I think they're important to talk about. Oh, I'm so excited for this. This is Zadie Smith's Swing Time, which I have wanted to read for so long, but again, I haven't found it for ages. And it was finally in my charity shop that I go to, my charity shop, in my local charity shop that I visit all the time. And it's a hardback copy and it's just, it's just so beautiful. Um, I haven't read anything by Zadie Smith yet, but I've got a couple of her books already that I want to read. I've just heard so many amazing things about this book in particular that I'm really, really excited to give it a go. Right, okay, on to stack two. There's only two stacks, it's fine. We're almost halfway there. This is Between the Lies by Cathy McPhail. I actually got sent this book by a Scottish publisher and I was really, really excited for it. And then I didn't realise until it came that I've actually read something by the author before that I really enjoyed. Um, so the other book was called Roxy's Baby and it was something that I read, I don't know when I was 14, 15, and I was like, quite shocked at the whole ah people have sex and people write about it and it was kind of yeah I remember it as being something that I really enjoyed this one has a lot of kind of um like messages written in it which I quite I quite like it when people subvert the kind of normal typeface of a book I really really enjoy that so yeah that's and it's something that's mostly young adult books that do um, and I wish more like genuine, it, well it's like young adult books or really kind of modernist out there books that do it and I wish more just generic adult books did it but there's a lot of things that I wish they did more so this is Truth or Dare by Non Pratt I bought Trouble by him I think a couple of months ago and basically what drew me to this book is the fact that it's the story is split into two, so this is the first half, and you can see that it's the right way up, and then this is upside down, so yeah. If you flip the book, you've got Truth or Dare on the other side, um, and I've just never seen something like this before in my life, and yeah, I just thought, again, with the whole like playing with the idea of what a book is and how you format a book, this is something that I haven't seen before, and I just really want to read it. Oh, there's so many books. This is... Things have gotten out of hand. Right, so we've got All the Bright Places by Jennifer Niven. I think last month I bought Holding Up the Universe. And both of these books are something that I've really wanted to read for ages. I've heard amazing things about this. And I think the cover's really pretty as well. So the back... Um, the blurb is kind of written on post-it notes. And it says, Theodore Finch wants to take his own life. I'm broken and no one can fix it. Violet Markey is devastated by her sister's death. They meet on the ledge of the school bell tower and so their story begins. It's only together they can be themselves. Um, yeah, it just sounds like a really lovely young adult love story, which I think there, there are quite a few young adult books in here this month. Um, they're just something that I'm really, really enjoying at the moment. I read Eleanor and Park earlier this month and I absolutely loved it. So it kind of, yeah, inspired me to basically buy more. I'm not sure if that's a good thing, because n now we've ended up in this situation. Um, so this is Based on a True Story by Delphine de Vergan. Um, I've started subscribing to a book subscription box called Reading in Heels, and you get a book and like three or four or four or five um, beauty goodies every month and I was definitely going to film an unboxing of it and then I got too lazy and I didn't so and I, I just really wanted to like I just wanted to open it and I didn't want to wait to film it and yeah this was the book that came in with February's one um I'm quite yeah intrigued by it I think the cover's very bold and the blurb says do not trust this book when Delphine meets Elle at a party she seems like the perfect friend 
beautiful, confident and unusually intuitive. The two women quickly develop a close bond, sharing stories about their past, their favourite books and their personal lives. But when Elle starts wearing the same clothes as Delphine and even starts to answer her emails, it becomes clear that there is more to her than meet the eyes. What would you do if your best friend tried to steal your life? Yeah, it sounds dark and thrillery and I haven't read a thriller in a while so I should probably read this soon. <sighs> this is a book that again, like everybody and their mother has and has been talking about. I love the colour, cover and the colour. It's The Power by Naomi Alderman. The blurb says, all over the world women are discovering they have the power. With a flick of their fingers they can inflict terrible pain, even death. Suddenly every man on the planet finds they've lost control. The day of the girls has arrived, but where will it end? I just think that sounds incredible. It sounds kind of like, not a dystopian novel, but scary and interesting and amazing. And yeah, I just want to see how it plays out. Right, this is something that was recommended to me by a friend. It's something that I wouldn't normally go for, but she said it was amazing and she loves the author and this is one of their best books. It's Stalker by Lars Kepler. And again, it's a thriller. The blurb says, a film arrives at Stockholm's National Crime Investigation Department showing a woman in her own home, plainly aware, unaware she is being watched. The police don't take it seriously until she is found murdered. When the next video arrives, Detective Margot Silverman frantically attempts to identify the, the victim, but they're already dead because at the time the video was sent, the killer was already inside their house. Who will the stalker target next? So I got told not to read this when you're home alone and I don't think I will because I feel scared <laughs> already without even realise, re realising it, reading it. Okay, we're getting down to the last few, it's fine. Um, this is another big book. I've got quite a few like chunky books this month. This is The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo by Steve Larson, and I actually owned it before but the copy I had it was just like completely messed up. I got to about I think page 40 or something and it skipped to page 200 and it didn't just do it for one page and then go back it was all like all the pages were in the wrong order and I was just gutted because I've managed to get into the book and then I couldn't read anymore but I finally bought a new copy and I'm gonna be like there are no words for how upset I'm gonna be if this is the same but I think I checked when I was in the shop and it's not. Um, this is Rip Van Winkle and Other Stories by Washington Irving. I had to read Rip Van Winkle, that's really hard to say, uh, when I was at uni on my course and yeah I just wanted to see what else the author kind of wrote um, and to kind of remind myself of the story because I think I kind of I skim read it in time for a seminar and I just wanted to actually give it its, its time, give it its due and yeah it's a puffin book so I think it's meant to be for younger children but or like teens or yeah um but it's something that's like quite an allegorical story and bears I think I read it for my like early American literature course oh, this book I just think it's so pretty it's Lord of the Flies by William Golding which I think everybody in the UK had to study at school I loved it when I read it and it was one of those things that genuinely is probably one of the reasons why I ended up studying English at uni because it was the first book that I ever remember really enjoying writing about in like essays and things so yeah this is just a really really pretty copy of it if you don't know what Lord of the Flies is it's about it's a book about a group of boys that end up kind of abandoned on an island with no parents kind of think lost but with kids and everything gets a bit dark and a bit scary and it kind of shows what yeah what humanity can be like if you have to go back to the basics and it's not very pretty on to the last book we're here this is will, will grayson will grayson by john green and david lefythan i love john green and the 12 days of dash and lily that i spoke about earlier is written by david lefythan so i found out i really liked his writing as well and them writing a book together is something that i think I'm hoping it can't go wrong. I really, yeah, I think the cover's really pretty as well. And that's it. 
<laughs> we're done um this is like the yeah this is the biggest book haul i've ever done and i'm kind of hoping that it's the bis biggest one that i ever will do because i need to get this back under control um yeah i hope you enjoyed this video i really enjoyed filming it and please subscribe for more videos and give it a like if you it did like it that makes sense see you soon bye